Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents. Our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. In today's video, we are going to be discussing spring clean fragrances. These are just some of the fragrances that I love to wear when I just want to smell fresh and bright and clean in the springtime. I do apologize for my voice. As you guys know, if you follow me on Instagram, my nephew just led the CBC team here in St. Louis to the state championship. Y'all know I was acting a fool, hollering, hooping, all of that. So I'm trying to get my voice back, but I needed to film for you guys. So please bear with me, even though I may sound a little masculine, my apologies. Anyway, if you want to know what fragrances I love to wear in the springtime to smell fresh and clean and bright, let's jump right into the video. We're also going to forgive my hair today. I'm having a terrible hair day. This is day three of a wash and go using Curl Smith products. I swear for as much as those products cost, they do not work for my hair. I mean, it's a tragedy. The only person I really hear touting and pushing Carol Smith is Bianca Renee. And I think the difference is that she refreshes her hair every single day. Whereas I'm the girl who likes to do her hair on Sunday and have it last through Saturday and just do it again the next Sunday. Carol Smith is not for me. This is like the third line I've tried. I know people that ask me about my hair a lot. Um, I'm telling you, no, I can't do it. This is ridiculous for day three. It's like whatever. Also too, for those who care about the lippy that I'm wearing, I finally paid enough attention to it and I had to look really hard because it's so old and all the letters are rubbed off. It's by NYX or NYX Cosmetics and I think it's called like, I forgot already. It's a lip gloss and it's something about red, like plush red. Yeah, it's a lip gloss plush red. So that is what I'm wearing on my lips since you girls can't, I mean, a girl can't keep nothing to herself. Like every time, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Look, some of my reds are so bomb. I want to keep them to myself. I'm not trying to have everybody walk around looking like me. But this one, I don't mind sharing because it's the one I wear like 80% of the time. So it is what it is. First up, we are going to talk about an oldie but grady. This is Clinique Happy. Oh my goodness, you guys. This reminds me that I used to be 18 once. Um, I absolutely love Clinique Happy. I love this sprayer. This scent is just so reminiscent of my teenage years and my early 20s. Oh man, are you kidding me? There is so much going on in here. In, in terms of fruits like citruses, I think there's like blood grapefruit, there's like orange. Um, then you have your amber and your rose and your mimosa and your musk and freesia and just apple and orchid. Like there's so much going on in here. This is, so, but this is not a heady floral. Not a heady floral fragrance. There's beautiful amounts of citrus and those florals are there, but they like this. Even though when you look at the notes list, if you go to fragrantica.com and look up the notes for this fragrance, you would think, oh, that's that's too many floors. I can't do that. It's not what this is. I don't know how with that notes list, this turns out to be so watery clean. Like, guys, um, I had been without this for so many years and I had to go and repurchase it. I was like, I really need Clinique Happy back. Now, it doesn't smell exactly the same as it did when I was younger, um, but it doesn't matter. It is still good. That's how good it was. And even with some changes, because it definitely seems like it's been reformulated, it is still one of the easiest grab-and-go fragrances I could ever think of on the planet. This is great for work, for running errands, for the gym, I think I hear about Clinique Happy being more uh, worn to the gym more than any other fragrance. It's just so pretty, so fresh, and so clean. So again, from Clinique, that is Clinique Happy. Whoa! Boy! Thick thighs save lives is all I'm going to say, okay? Let's try that again. Clinique. Clinique Happy by Clinique. <laughs> You know what? I am so random in today's video. So, But if you're used to being here, if you're a part of the Terror Squad, then you know we just go with the flow. Let me tell you guys. So when I was on vacation in Branson for Valentine's Day, um, I used all of my Sweet Diamond 
Sweet Pepper Pink Diamond, Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper from K. Ali and threw the bottle away. So that's my apologies. I didn't get to show you guys. But I recently just finished the Invite Only Amber 23 as well. This was the, my Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper was the same size as this. If you guys watched the video I put out where I said I was going to be going through the fragrances I want to use up this year, both of those were on there. So I've accomplished that. I also, like a month or two ago, finished my Terra de Joa. Oh my goodness. And... I recently, as in today, what is with me wanting to drop everything, finished my La Vie Belle or the Parfum, which is also on that list. And then I also finished a travel size of the Nest Golden Nectar. So um, I have, I, I bought a full bottle of this because it was that good. Like I just really, yeah, I really like this one. I, I can't help myself. So I just wanted to take the time to show you guys my empties. I am really dwindling down that list of fragrances I told you I wanted to get through this year. I'm not playing. All 14 of them will be gone this year. So let's jump back into the video. Let's jump over to the house of Versace. And we're going to be talking about Versace Versense. This is another really pretty green fragrance. This has beautiful notes of citruses. This also is going to give you, I do believe there's like olive in here. There's fig in here. There's sandalwood. There's Virginia cedar. I think there's a lily in here. There is just some beautiful, there are just some beautiful, beautiful notes in this. But it definitely, that fig um, definitely just, you know, adds some hardiness and some depth. And a little bit of sex appeal to me that leans a little masculine, a little bit, a little unisex. I mean, I, it, I can't lie. I just I can see this on a dude the same way I could me. I will say that on my skin, it pulls sweeter and more feminine. On a stick um, and sometimes in the air, again, without blending with me, it gives me very much unisex, leaning unisex. I still love this. I did a tag once where they said, what fragrance would you wear to the zoo? I immediately thought of this one, something very potent, something very loud and citrusy and pungent, a little pungent, um, that would just take away that animal smell, like from my nostrils. I would just bury my face in my shirt, doused it, you know, after I doused it with this. This is a very beautiful, fresh, clean, citrus, slightly woody, slightly musky, you know, green fragrance. So um, again, I think it's the toughest to wear out of the Aqua de Joa. I don't like Aqua de Joa, but I will still say that it's easier to wear than this one if you are someone who is like me and you like really feminine fragrances. There is a line with this one. It toes a very fine line. And again, I could equally see men wearing this as well as women. In fact, let me just go ahead and, and, and place this caveat here. You can wear what you want when you want, how you want man or woman. When I am describing fragrances as feminine or masculine, I am talking about the traditional way that we think about things. We think about like peony and cupcakes and stuff like that for women. We always have traditionally doesn't mean a man cannot wear that. But for those of you who are in countries where you can't get your nose on these fragrances and you're looking to me to be as descriptive as possible, I'm going to use those words. Because when someone describes a fragrance as masculine to me, I already know. Thank you so much for that bit of information. I'm out. Because I don't do masculine fragrances. I don't care. So I appreciate the info. But I know when somebody is explaining something as masculine, they're not telling me I can't wear it because I'm a woman. They're just saying, hey, if you don't like the harsh outdoors, cypress, pine needles type of vibe, this isn't for you. And I don't. So it isn't for me. So thanks for the heads up. Just saying. All right. Back to this. Love it. I'm surprised how much I love it. It did take a few wears. But again, if we're talking about fresh, clean spring fragrances, this is a good one. Next up, we're going to talk about Mademoiselle Roche's or the Toilette Formulation. This is another fragrance that has some citrus that has a ton of florals in it. But it pulls like the notes that they that they have on here are not necessarily what I smell at all. Look at these sprays. This sprayer's on the Mademoiselle line and just everything. This, oh my gosh, like listen. It is absolutely a fruity floral fragrance. Um, for as many notes that they have going on in here, it's not as busy and chaotic as it seems like it would be. This is so pretty. It has a tartness to it. It has a light, beautiful, airy floralness to it. And the fruits are perfection. Little tart, little sweet, absolutely perfect for spring and for summer. 
Um, this one is unlike the others. There's Mademoiselle Couture. There's Mademoiselle um, Eau de Parfum. There's In Black. There's the blue one in the gold bottle that I cannot for the life of me think of the name of now. Byzance. Byzance. This one is the cleanest, most like just, oh my God, almost, it's just guys, listen, um, this fragrance line and the honeysuckle in it, baby, look, I love the note of honeysuckle and uh, so often it is put in fragrances and I cannot pick it up. Like it's something that people just love to throw on their notes list and it's not like, I don't want to say that I don't want to use the word visible, but it's not detectable to my nose. And in this, I get it. This is such a deliciously delightful, pretty, fruity, floral fragrance um, and clean. There's a cleanness. It's almost like a, I almost want to feel, you know, I feel like something from Garnet Fructis or um, Herbal Essence, but without any type of soapiness to it, because I do not like soapiness. So I can't say shampoo itself, but maybe what you would smell like after you rinse the shampoo out, you're nice and fresh and clean and you just smell like light florals and fruit. Baby, this is so freaking good. I'm going to have to put the notes list for this up. I mean, because my head is like, I'm feeling like, God, I can't even remember all the notes in this, guys. There may be some plum in here, but there are like so many florals in, in this. It's not even funny. I'm not even going to try to recollect them all. I just don't have it in me today. And what I'm smelling is citrus and a ton of really pretty florals. To make sure I don't forget to add a picture of the notes in the editing process, I'm going to go ahead and tell them to you now. I went and got my computer. I pulled up the notes. So in this fragrance, we have black currant, violet leaf, pink pepper, bergamot, jasmine sunback, honeysuckle, plum, cedar, lily of the valley, rose, white musk, and benzoin. That computer like be vicious, boy. I can't do that mess. Um, guys, this it, it is just like my whole room just smells so clean and so pretty. So you're gonna get your beautiful, fruity, floral, slightly woody, slightly musky vibe. If that is what you like, I can't I can't talk about this line enough. It's such an inexpensive line with some really pretty fragrances that are really great for running errands, going to work, just living your everyday life. Um, none of them necessarily, would I say, are specific to date night. Maybe the Byzance one, but I didn't like that one because it was too masculine. You could say unisex, but it really smelled like a man to me. So, um, but if you want bang for your buck, meaning something really pretty that has a nice longevity to it, I top up at four hours with all of them, but not because it's completely disappeared, because that's just what I do. This one being the Eau de Toilette formulation actually lasts longer than the Eau de Parfum and the Couture and the In Black. Go figure. I feel like the Byzance one would have lasted for eons if I hadn't washed it off, but I just couldn't take it. So again, that's Mademoiselle Roche's Eau de Toilette formulation. Next up, we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite spring summer fragrances of all time, yo. And it comes from a makeup company, but a lot of things now, I guess, do. But I knew them for makeup and they are still predominantly known for makeup, not perfume. This is MAC Turquotic. Yes, MAC as in Ruby Woo MAC. Um, this is such a really, really, really great fragrance. Oh, the bottle, you know, it, it depends. <laughs> what the, what is this? Um, man, it's, oh, that just smells, baby. They hit different. This, it, it really does smell like aquatic, marine almost. I just instantly thought of a turtle right then and there. And not like a stinky turtle. But it just put me in the mind frame of straight up aquaticness. Like this is, the when people are using that word, this is the type of fragrance they are talking about. Sometimes they use that word for other things and it doesn't fit. But anyway, Max Aquatic, this is the weirdest like bottle, like... This plastic, listen, it's fine. Um, Cause I don't really care. It's not, a, you know, I don't know what to say about this packaging. The top and the bottom don't even match. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? It's like grass at the bottom and like some kind of plants. Or it's supposed to be, look, I digress. I didn't get it for the packaging. I The Amalfi lemons in here. Amalfi lemons just really smell 
so different from regular lemons. I just absolutely love it. And the Virginia cedar in here. This is just this is just a fantastic. And they have notes like watery notes and stuff like that in here. But if you are looking for an aquatic fragrance, if you're looking for something that really reminds you of like being on a beach, vacationing in the summertime, smelling fresh and clean and bright. If you love the note of lemon, I just cannot see how you could go wrong with Match Aquatic. It is absolutely, it's, ju it's just that good to me. Um, If you have tried Mac Turquatic, please talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think. How would you compare the Mac Turquatic uh, fragrance to like a Chanel Chanto Fresh? I actually asked this before in my community tab. Um, I think I did it between Mac Turquatic, Chanel Chance Eau Fresh, Aqua de Joa, which I just gave away because I just, I have to admit, Aqua de Joa is just not for me. And the other one was uh, Versace Versace. How do how do you feel about those? If you've tried all four, if you've tried some of them, let's talk about it in the comments because I'm always curious about that again. And speaking of my community tab, for those of you who will answer the question that I ask, simply answer the question that I ask. Thank you so much for being able to stay on point. I can't believe how hard it is for some people just to answer a question. Lord. I still keep doing it though because a lot of times I am asking those questions for a reason, for a video idea, or for um, to go and purchase something. Like I've made some really good affordable purchases lately based off how you guys answer the questions in my community tab. So again, thank you guys so much for participation. Hashtag Terror Squad. <laughs> Next up, we are going to talk about another citrus, slightly floral woody slightly musky fragrance i'm starting to notice a pattern here with these spring clean fragrances you guys this is dolce and gabbana light blue forever this is what i wanted dolce and gabbana intense to be dolce and gabbana intense is terrible to me there is something in that that just does not work for me i'm not a fan at all but this one here smells exactly like the original one to me only better stronger more you know Ah, oh, heavier on the citrus in the opening. Like there's like, you know, who knows what's in here? Like lemon, lime, orange, whatever. Tons of citruses together. The green apple note is just there. It's so crisp. It's just mm, a little bit of tart. I think you have some cedar in here. You some white musk. There's like some white floral notes or something like that. This is so good there's a little bit more depth to it better staying power just more personality to me and let me let me dial it back a little bit because i said it smells exactly like the original it doesn't it's more powerful it's stronger it's like i said it's hardier got more depth more personality i don't see you disliking this if you like the original um the freshness that you find in this line their use of citrus, their use of that apple note, it just does something for me. It really does. Next up, we're going to jump over to the house of Gucci and we're going to talk about Gucci Bamboo, the Eau de Parfum formulation. I really want to try the Eau de Toilette formulation as well because I hear great things about it. But when I talked about Gucci Bamboo, the love you guys show in my comment section made me so happy. Because back in the day when this came out, it was everything I wore it every day. There is not a lick, not a piece of bamboo in here according to the notes. How funny is that? There is Casablanca Lily in here. If you're a Lily lover, you're going to love this. If you don't like Lily, you Lily. If you don't like Lily, you might want to stay away from this one. There is beautiful amber and Tahitian vanilla in this. There's also some Ylang Ylang in here and some sandalwood. So this is this is like with those notes, you wouldn't think fresh and clean. Like I assuredly don't, but that's what I get. Like this makes me feel like. Like I said, that lily is just doing things. That greenness in there, oh my gosh. If this is not springtime in a bottle where it's like, it's like a buttoned up sophisticated spring though. Um, I just, I love her. Again, that's Gucci Bamboo from the House of Gucci. Next up, we're going to talk about the House of Elizabeth Arden, the white tea collection. I'm going to go ahead and go with the original white tea. I love this fragrance as i describe it it's like a grandmother's love a grandmother's hug um i just live this is the most zen fragrance in my collection this fragrance like what, what am i supposed to do with this 
other than feel so pretty, so clean, so relaxed, so I should be wearing this every day. The way people be getting on my nerve. <laughs> oh, it's just what a brilliant fragrance. What a brilliant fragrance. And you have these like notes of like fern and clary sage and white tea. And I think like some white iris or something. And there's a little bit of tonka bean in here too. Like at first when I was looking at those notes, I'm like fern. Clary Sage, what are we doing? C notes, like what are we doing? And that aquaticness just hit me. Um, it's just like, yeah, yeah. I really do enjoy Elizabeth Arden White Tea. You guys, um, look at look this collection up on Fragrantica. For those of you who are like, you know, not well versed in looking up notes and figuring out what you like, that is a very important part of you know, being in FRAGCOM and, and discovering what you like and um, curating your collection, your perfect collection for you. Get on Fragrantica.com. Look up fragrances. Look at the notes. Write down the similarities and the fragrances you love the most and the notes that they share. And that'll give you a profile of what you really like so you can know what to look for in other fragrances. But do not be afraid to step outside the box. Like I said, C notes I can rock with. But Clary Sage and Fern, like, so there are just some things. And I'm like, come again. Um, and I wouldn't have tried if I wasn't thinking outside the box. And if I wasn't allowing those beautiful souls in FRAGCOM who I share commonalities with to sway me to step outside the box. So don't be afraid. White tea is a very beautiful fragrance. I don't think you can go wrong with it, especially if you're someone who doesn't always have to be so big and bad and boastful with your fragrance. If sometimes you just want to chill and smell absolutely amazing and fresh and clean and like crisp, this is one you're going to want to have in your collection. Next up, we're going to jump over to the House of Dua and we're going to talk about an inspired by fragrance from the House of Creed. So Creed's Pure White Cologne. Dua's version is called Bianca Pura. Tons of citruses in here, okay? Citruses everywhere, including Neroli, which I love. I always name that one because people know when they don't like Neroli. If you don't like Neroli, it is very prominent in this fragrance. Heads up. There's also ambergris in here. There's rice, which is always interesting in a fragrance to me. There is white musk as well. And then there's something called like a Genovese pear. So this is just... It's it's name it's it's inspired by something called pure white cologne. So you know you're getting this is a citrus fresh. You're going to get citrus in this. It's smacking you in the face. If you do not like citrus, this is not for you. I love this fragrance. It gives me that clean, potent, citrusy, zesty thing that I just love for spring. We have another inspired by fragrance from the House of Dua. This one is called Pure Gold Nectar. This one is inspired by Zerzhoff's Herba Gold. Tons of citruses. Again, you also have white musk. You have amber accord. You have Madagascan vanilla. But this is all about the citruses. This one, when I first smelled it, and it said amber accord. Like I'm telling you, Dua does amber different from a lot of, from everybody really. Um, It almost pulled like incense. I feel like I'm getting some incense or even like, the most fruity, girly um, oud you could you could ever get. This is the same type of vibe I get from Jasmine Wisp by Razazzi. So um, I love this. I've never smelled the original from Zerzhoff. I like the price point on this one much better. But again, that is pure gold nectar. Lots of citruses, but a very vibrant, pungent, potent something to it, you know? And I think it's the amber accord that's coming through so loud. Because the white musk and the Madagascar vanilla, they just very lightly glide across this and through this. They aren't the stars of anything with this. It is those zesty um, citruses, those loud, potent citruses, tamed by that rough and tumble amber cord. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Um, so, you know, if this is what the original smells like, kudos to Zerzhoff because... This thing right here is fire. Again, that is pure gold nectar from the House of Dua. By the way, this is my second one of these. I use an entire bottle of this. If you know Dua fragrances, you know what type of love and dedication it takes to be able to move through a bottle of one of them. Sticking with the Dua brand, 
we're going to be talking about one last inspired by fragrance. This is inspired by the Maison Francis Kirk Dijon's Aqua Universalis Forte. This is called Aqua Bravata. Y'all know my favorite perfumer is the Francis Kirk Dijon or the Maison Francis Kirk Dijon. Love, 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 love him. And this one here is, again, with that familiar DNA, that structure, we're going to do the um, beautiful white florals. We're going to do the citruses. We're going to do a melange of musks. And we're going to also do some woody notes. This one, perfection in a bottle. This is so clean. This is jeans and t-shirt. This is a, you know, with your, you know, shoe, your tennis shoes, your fresh Air Force Ones or whatever you wear. Or this is jeans and a button up shirt with some heels and a bag. It does not matter. This is so Listen, the musk, the melange of musk or melange of musks, the woody notes, the citruses, like I, I live for this fragrance. It is so perfect for spring and summer, maybe even more so for summer, because this is something that just thrives in the heat. But then again, we do get some seriously hot 80 degree weather days, 85, 87, 89 in the spring too. So Aqua Bravada, very clean, very crisp beautiful amounts of musk and woodiness to get in there with those white florals there might be some jasmine in here too um i just i live and the citrus now these citruses are bright and give you a burst of energy but they're not zesty because the woodiness and the muskiness just take it over you might get a little bit of zest in the beginning but it pulls like a little bit like bamboo there's something familiar with the gucci bamboo or the parfum and this one as well but the ultimate goal here, the thing to focus on, is the level of crisp cleanness, guys. If that's your vibe, I'm telling you, try something from this list. If you haven't, go to Fragrantica.com for those non-dual fragrances. If you want to look at some of the duas that I talked about, go to the, not the, thedualbrand.com. Look at the notes. See what vibes with you the most. Um, if we, you know, because people ask me this. If I'm looking at this list that I talked about and I'm pulling out my favorite one from, oh, you know, I know I'm not doing that because that's impossible. I would say automatically the one I think would be the most appealing to the masses would be this one. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't like this one unless they don't like tart. And if you don't like tart, then the next safest ones would probably be Clinique Happy and white tea however guys I, I i think the hardest one what am i doing right now i'm trying to i'm thinking of all the questions that come my way whenever i do videos the hardest one to wear is probably this one because so many people struggle with fig and the fig in this comes across a little animalic i'm not gonna lie so this one might be the hardest one to wear for anybody the rest of these i just think are easy breezy like i really do so yeah Thank you guys so much for spending time with me and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you learned about some new fragrances today, tell me if any of them pique your interest. You know, I love to talk to you guys in the comments. While you're here, please click that like button and do not forget to subscribe to the Terra Squad as well as select that notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. Let's get to talking in the comments. Tell me your favorite spring clean fragrances because I could always use more not i still am curious though let me know i might be putting something on my wish list until then guys bye